You just clicked on the Meaningful People podcast, and I'm Yaakov Langer. And I'm Nachi Gordon. And we're starting off this episode... A little bit different. A little bit different. I yeah. mean, but you know what? This episode is different because as you could see, as you could be... You're, you, you saw that you clicked on Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Yeah. And I, we all know that he's no longer with us in a certain way, but in a certain way, he is still with us. And you'll hear a lot more about him, about his life, and probably our most unique episode yet. But first, we have a really special message from our good friend, Shmuel, all the way in Israel. Shmuel, where are you and what are you doing? Every year we say, L'Shana Haba Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Well, I'm standing in an apartment that's being raffled off in the middle of Yerushalayim with a view of Harabayit. Take a look at this. Harabayit, right in front of you. Like, which way do we dive in Mincha? Right here. You're going to see the Beta Mikdash from your window. And this apartment is not for sale. It's being raffled off. You could buy a one raffle ticket and win this apartment. It's called the dreamraffle.com. A million dollar luxury apartment being raffled off. And if because of Meaningful People podcast, you go into our website, the dreamraffle.com, buy one ticket, get two. Buy two, get two tickets, get four. Everything is doubled. Your entire sale is doubled. And in the coupon code MPP, Meaningful Pod, uh, People Podcast, MPP, you'll take an additional $10 off. Now, where does the money go? The dreamraffle.com supports Israeli small businesses hit hard by Corona and Israeli farmers planting before Shemitah and especially the farmers near Gaza and on the Golan that are fighting and dealing with terror, whether it's from Hamas or whether it's from Syria. We are supporting these heroes. So it's a win-win situation. You could win a tremendous million dollar apartment and you also help an amazing cause. TheDreamRaffle.com and don't forget MPP. You get two for one and an additional $10 off. L'Shana Habab Yerushalayim, this apartment can be your- wow, thank you so much, Mool. I am kind of jealous right now. I wish I was you. I wish where you were at. But most of all, I want that apartment. I know. And I already entered the dream raffle. Before we even did this, <laughs> Nahi's like, it's such a cool It's raffle. a cool... They're, they're like... They're not... It's not... A, they're giving away an apartment. Like, you're overlooking the Harabayas. And all right, to There's nothing greater. There's no... Greater thing. And also the money that you're giving is going to an incredible cause. Sadaka. Yeah. So uh, obviously ask your local rabbi if you could use your Meister money. Personally asked mine. He said I could, but I'm not a Paisic. So ask your rabbi. But $180 for the bill that, that buys you two tickets, plus you get $10 off, maybe even more. If you right. do MPP in the coupon code, please do that. Right. Remember, guys, code. MPP in the coupon code. And you go to the dreamraffle.com. That's T H E D R E. A M R A F F L E dot com, and it's worth entering. A, you're doing a great thing. You're giving money to an amazing cause, and B, you can win big. You can win like bigger than you've ever won in your entire life. Type. Um, this is a, a life changing, game changing prize. <laughs> it's so cool. I'm just thinking, what if like clearly me and you are actually entering this? Because yes, why not? What if? Well, what if we win? Like, we like the biggest. If we if world. we win, we're gonna we're gonna do episodes from that apartment. Okay, Deal? I like that. Yes. That okay, is a guys. Deal. All right, guys. But in all honesty, go check it out, thedreamraffle.com, and buy a ticket because you never know. And now I'm gonna get sued by the lotto. <laughs> and use uh, coupon code MPP. Um, now transitioning into this this week's episode, it's yeah. something we've never done before. It's it's obviously titled Rib Moshe Feinstein. Um, a, 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 a massive gadol who who passed away even before Nachi and I were born. Right. He was born in 1992, Nachi in 2003. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know for myself, I, I've heard all my life, uh, you know, being that we're, we're, we grew up in America, that so much of we that we know from before our times has been staged by Rav Moshe Feinstein. He really set the tone for the Torah that we see in America. Obviously, there's other Gedalim also, but focusing on Rav Moshe Feinstein. And w- we met this really, really incredible person, Ali. Ali. Yeah. yeah he's, <laughs> he's so good. We know it's not your classic type of episode, and Ali's definitely a special type of guy. And we got to sit down with him and talk to him 
Um, we, we, we did, I mean, we spoke to Ali for a very long time. We had to even edit this episode a bunch, uh, but beer, beer with us the entire I would say, episode. you know, stick with it. There's, there are a ton of gems in this episode. Um, it was pretty an incredible experience to hear about the life of Ramosha Feinstein, the impact. And I think for a lot of our listeners, be it older or younger, if you're older, you're, you know, really reminiscing and, and maybe hearing stories you haven't heard. And if, if you're younger, and you didn't live in the, in the same, you know, dar or the time as our Moshe Feinstein, you, this is an opportunity to really connect to greatness, connect to someone who is th- such an integral part of American Jewry. So this is why Yaakov and I are so excited to present this episode to you guys. Super important, and uh, we got to know our roots. Are we ending that intro like that? Yeah, <laughs> then it goes, nee, 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 nee. Enjoy the episode, guys. Welcome to the Meaningful People Podcast, the podcast where we talk to people who are meaningful. Yeah, that sounds good. Tonight, we are together with Ali Stern, Alex Stern. Some of you, probably a lot of you have never heard of Ali, and uh, we're really excited to talk to you about Rev Moshe Feinstein, your unique relationship that you had with him. Uh, let's start off with a question. Uh, first of all, how old are you, Ali? 70. You're 70 years old. Yeah. Okay, so your relationship with Ramosha Feinstein, could you give us insight into how that started? Right, that's interesting. Uh, a couple of people asked me about it. I remember, uh, more or less, it started that my sister Phyllis, her, her closest friend was uh, Susan Shiskow. So I'll tell you who Susan Shiskal uh, is. Susan Shiskal is the daughter of the late Rev Moshe Leo Shiskal. Um, Moshe Leo Shiskal was Rav Moshe's son-in-law. My relationship started that my sister was a very close friend of Susan Shiskal, and uh, I think on a Hebrew name, I remind myself now, is Sarah Rifka. She currently resides in Miami Beach uh, year-round. And she, uh, uh, being the granddaughter of Ramosha Feinstein, she told Ram- uh, Rebetzin Feinstein that I know a person who can help you out in the house, and it happened to be me. So I was probably, uh, I figured I was 11, 12 years old. I figured I first went in there. How do I figure that? <clears throat> because... I got a present for my bar mitzvah with an inscription for, for Ramosha and his Dibris Moshe and Baba Kama. So when I remember I was in his house even before that period, so I must have been in his house. I was probably 11, 12 years old. That's the first, that was the first time I met Ramosha. What was that like for you that first time you, you saw him? The first him? time I met, I already knew about him because my father, my late father, told me a lot of about him. My late father, I'll even say over one incident, which I mentioned in the car, I said I'll tell you in the car what I mentioned, that my father once told me, <clears throat> my father was a Talmud of Rav David Leibowitz. <laughs> Rav David Leibowitz was one of the most preeminent Rosh Hashivas in the 1930s. He was the Rosh Hashiva of Torah Vedas. And later, he uh, started his own yeshiva, which is ongoing till the Adayom Azeh, till this very day. The yeshiva is, yeshiva is Chofetz Chaim. So the Abdavid, my father, was zeichet to learn by Rav David Leibowitz. And Rav David Leibowitz told the whole shir, the whole class, that th- at this moment, well, let's say it was 1938, 39, Rav Davil uh, said that a, a big person just came from Russia. No one knows about him. No one knows anything about him. But his name is going to spread very quickly. He's one of the biggest guy in the world. His name is Ramosha Feinstein. And it's not going to take long when the whole America and the whole world will be talking about him. That's what my father told me. So I already uh, had a tremendous admiration for Ramosha. So the first time I met Ramosha, he was very friendly and warm. It's hard to believe 
When you spoke to Ramosha, you thought you were talking, even you, as a 10, 11 year old kid, you thought you were talking to your best friend. He, you didn't feel un at ease. You felt very relaxed. And truthfully, I could say it, Ramosha had a unique hadras ponim, but it still didn't scare you. He had a very sharp face. You could see that he was a unique person. He didn't look like the average person in the street. He had a tremendous, he saw godless in his look, but yet he didn't intimidate you. When I, when I went in the first time, I spoke to him and I thought I was speaking with him, but with my friend. So the, that was the first time. Then my first things I ever did in the house was I uh, wrote uh, Rosh Hashanah cards. <clears throat> I coordinated with the Rebbets of Ramosha, who I should, uh, they, had, they had like 200 uh, Rosh Hashanah cards. My first line of the, what I first had to do was um, on Rosh, from beginning of Elul till after Sukkot, Ramosha wanted to send out Rosh Hashanah cards to about 200 people. So I coordinated with him a list of people, and I wrote the addresses, put into an envelope, and if it was an important person, I would go into Ramosha, and Ramosha would write a few words. That was my first uh, encounter that I had to, you know, uh, do something for him. You know, How old were you when this happened? I was, this was 12 years old, 11, 12, probably 12, mm -hmm. 12 years old. But uh, I, again... I felt very at ease with him. You, you, did, you didn't feel any intimidation factor. How, how a, old was Rav Moshe Feinstein when, when, at that Moshe time? Moshe Feinstein must have been about 60 then, in the 60s, the middle, middle 60s. He looked very, uh, uh, even though was, I was a 12-year-old uh, young kid, I was very impressed with him. He didn't look like the average, even Talmud Chacham. You see, uh, you, could, you meet, I'm, I was a Talmud RJJ, you see, you're a Bayim. He didn't look like a regular person. He had a look of a godl, unique, very sharp looking features, very distinguished. He didn't look like a regular person. You saw, you saw, yeah, when you were in his presence, you, you knew you were in a, it's a contradictory force. You felt you were in the presence of a great person, but you didn't feel intimidated. He made you feel, feel like you were his best friend. He didn't, uh, he was very uh, warm and friendly, and I think he even went out of his way to be warm and friendly. It wasn't uh, in his personality. It's, uh, it's my understanding way, his personality, he was a very quiet person. He's, he's not a very talkative person, but I mean, he was. I don't think he was a very talkative person. He was just a great person. He adjusted himself to be go out of his way to be friendly. What's the first unique uh, thing which I s think I saw perspective on Moshe was as following. <coughs> Ramosha <coughs> was, it might be a, st uh, a contradictory, but it's probably not contradictory. Ramosha was maybe, even though there's a door of going in Rabbi Yashabes Salavechik or Rav Shach and Etzisrol or Otto Stipel, other ones. I'm not the one to rank. I'm a big sports fan, but I follow Mickey Mantle and Wally May. We used to have, <laughs> we used to have arguments in the Lower East Side. Who's better, Mickey Mantle, Wally Mays, or Duke Snyder? I'm not going to get into this argument with Amarish and Otto Gadalim, but uh, I, 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 Daiti, even though I'm a nobody, I'm allowed to think. I mean, anyone can argue with me. I mean, I don't, couldn't care less. My personal opinion, Amarish was, and in Gadda Satyr, he was the Goyan Adar, the Paisak Adar, and the Godl Adar. And I, he, the way I saw it, he knew about that. Ramosha is not a type of person to you. Everyone talks about Ramosha's Anivis. I don't think this Anivis is. Ramosha says that I'm, I'm not the big Goyan, uh, I'm just an average Talmachacham. He was very confident about himself. And Ramosha would not even allow anyone to argue with him. In his Igris Maisha or Divris, he always felt he was right, and he would go back and forth with shuvas, with people, never saying I was wrong, and he never ever retracted anything he said in Torah, 
whether, whether it's a, a shir in the yeshiva or a, a sh- more important, not to retract an igris maisha when people try to get him to uh, re- retract. So now, what am I saying? He was the Ghana Gainam, the Mashkiach used the Lashen. Mashkiach, when he would describe uh, Maish, he say, you subscribe the Lashen. The Rosh Hashiva, Ghana Gainam, the Gain of the Gainam. Well, Maish knew he was, but yet that didn't stop him. There was two facets to Ramaisha. There was one, <coughs> Bain Adam Lamakam, his relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and that was his Torah and that avod is davening. And then there was Bain Adam Lachavero. It was his Anivis Amidis was not the meekness in Torah. His Anivis Amidis is the godless is, is Anivis in, the, is, uh, in his Midis and his interaction with fellow people. That's his godless. Torah, he knew who he was. He didn't try to fake it out or, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not in special or the bigger guy than me. I mean, he didn't get into talking to me ever, who's a bigger guy or whatever it is. But I, uh, got the feeling he was, uh, very comfortable in his godless Torah. But it was unbelievable that he was able to lower himself to be very human. He thought it's very important that he has to, that's, I'm going to get into something which I don't think people in the world realize. I'm going to get into something new. He thought it was very, very important for him to give of his time to anybody. If it's a 10-year-old boy person, it's a 20-year-old person, and actually, I'll quote from David Feinstein now. David Feinstein, I read this about a month ago. Of David said, my father never wasted a second, but in learning. But it came to talking to uh, Almanus or Yusayimim, my or even Nudnikis who would chat with, uh, with nonsense. My father had no time limit. It could be an hour or two, because I'm going to soon to this, uh, say something what I saw. A lot of the observation I saw, I see people are writing now. No, maybe I'll say it even this second, but I'll give a little introduction. Hold on, before that, I, I just want to break it down quickly, and we want to have like a back and forth dialogue, because I know you, <laughs> Ali, and I know you could go on for a long time. First, I, I want you to give a little explanation of, a little more of, you 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 were basically a Ben Bias by Riv Moshe's house, no, for, right, for right, a few for years. So 20, 30, at least 20 years more. And and you 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 lived in his house in the way you mentioned to me that he didn't have many Talmidim that were there, maybe no. besides Riv Nissan Alpert. <laughs> yeah, Nissan Alpert, to be honest with you, at that period stopped coming already. Mm-hmm. Nissan Alpert was very established. He had a shul, low east side, very successful. He already went from MTJ to Y. He was very popular. He didn't have that uh, really time to. Uh, he didn't. Uh, hang but around. you. But he you. Didn't hang around the house. But you were you were around with him. You said to the point that even his his the Rebbitson went away, and she didn't want Ramosh right. to be alone. And right. You. Uh, right. Whenever the Rebbitson w- would uh, be away, uh, she would uh, call me up in advance a day or two and say I should either sleep with him. Or she's away for a couple of hours. I should be with him, be serving sapo, or be be with him. One mice with Lubavitcher Rebbe. We ever get to later happened to one of these incidents. That uh, should we get to there? Now? I was, was going to ask you. That, that surprised me, mm-hmm. and it uh, really uh, it surprised me, and it really got me a little annoyed that Ramosha would go off this thing. While he was that was a period of his life when he wasn't feeling that well. What what what, what did happen with her mission all about travel? This is very the a later thing. You want it earlier? The earlier? Or the, or <laughs> you were flying all over here, Alex. And that's what I'm saying. What do you want to hear? The earlier one or this one? <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> Tell me. We want to hear, but we want to hear both. Um, so what, I know what? we have limited time with I you, know, so we want to hear as much as possible. So we'll we'll let you direct whichever. No, so, uh, I think I'll say. Uh, we'll hear both. Let's hear both. I'll what? say both. All right. How do I get to uh, Ramosha Lubavitcher Rebbe is following? Uh, I'm, we made up a list. Whenever an Igris Moshe or Divis Moshe was printed, <laughs> I only gave it out to the people on the Lower East Side, Rabbanim. I'm not gonna, I gave uh, Igris Moshe to, we made a list of 30, 40 Rabbanim 
Rav Henkin, the Biyana Rebbe, Pishnitzer Rebbe, Rav Paula, uh, about the stuff, oh, uh, 15 of you, we have mentioned the car, 15, 20. So one day I pop into the house. I know I had it was on a uh, Thursday night, and I had a Yechida Sunday night. I was 21, 22 years old, maybe the early 20s. I had a Yechida with the Rebbe. I, my father introduced me to Lubavitch. My father was from Alexander Chesidim, from Europe before the war. After the war, he said, I got to attach myself to some Rebbe. So he went to a lot of Rebbe's, but the most important Rebbe he felt was Lubavitch. He went to the feeding of Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, and he took me to Menachem Mendel. I call him the Ramash, whatever. He, I took me to uh, the Menachem Mendel, and... I, in those years, it was easier. The Rebbe was very friendly to me. I was 14, 15 at that point when I first went to Lubavitch. The Rebbe was very friendly to me because there wasn't a huge crowd like I had later. And I was 21, 22, turned six years later. And I had a Yechidis. So I come into the house and I told uh, Ramesh and the Rebbe, so they were both in the kitchen. I remember very vividly. They were both in the kitchen. I said that I... I got a Yechid this Sunday and I will above Chereva. There's the Rashiva, I call him Rashiva. There's a Rashiva one. I should give him an Igris Maisha. So uh, uh, he said, of course. So there's something interesting happened. So the, he's, uh, he's, uh, he takes down an Igris, he goes to his room, takes down an Igris and a Dibris, and he started uh, inscribing something in there. And the Rebetzin got a little upset with him, and rightfully. I'll tell you why the Rebetzin got upset. Because he gave it to Otagadolim and didn't put any inscription. Here he started writing an inscription. So the Rebetzin said, what are you writing? What are you writing? You don't write for anybody. So he said, very, <laughs> he said this would be interesting comment. In Yiddish I'll say, I'm not going to ask you what to do. He said, I'm not going to ask you what I have to do. I want to write, I want to write something to him. So then he veered off course. He told me something interesting. I didn't ask him, be honest with you. I regret it. I'm going a little off course now. I regret retrospectively now. I always let him talk. I never ever question him too much. I should have questioned him more. So well, above it, I let him talk. I didn't ask him back and forth. Whatever he told me, he told me, and that's it. See, he told me I met the Rebbe. He's trying to be exactly now. He's trying to be friendly to me. So he didn't have to do this to me. He was like talking like a friend of mine. We were both sitting. He was sitting at this end of the table, and I was sitting in the kitchen. It was a table as big as this, probably. He was sitting over there, and I was sitting over here. He didn't have to tell me. He gave me a whole introduction that he knew the Rebbe already. He said, I met the Rebbe three times. He wasn't a Rebbe, he said. He said, I he mentioned where... He said, Rav Rifkin's Tanoyim, Rav Rifkin's, uh, to, to his, your, your, your father probably knew them very well. With all, he's also a fellow writer, mm -hmm. uh, by Ben C. and Shuren. Mm -hmm. So he told me we met him. And, and in the third place, I don't remember now where, which Simcha was. He told me, very interesting, he said, I spoke to him on learning to all, the, all three occasions. He said, he's a big, he's a big Goyan, and the world doesn't know what kind of Goyan he is. Says so I was very, Amosh was like taken back that he knew he was such a big time of He used the word guy and he said he's a big guy in the world. I know what kind of big guy he is. Anyway, to make that, to, so what happened is following, he shows you also is a nevis uh, from Amosh. It's insane. I, I told to Lepul Bav Chachsin, they still can't believe it. He, he went in, after the kitchen, he went into his room and inscribed it. I know exactly what he inscribed. I got, he, Yarach Nisiyasa, Yad Bagoyin Agoda, Menachem Enein, Menachem Mendo, Yarach Nisiyasa, Yad Bias Agoyel. And if, and if he finished writing it, he asked me to look at it if it's good. I, <laughs> I was, I was what, 20 years old? What if I could tell if it's good, not good? I don't know. I said, yeah, so if, uh, very good, very good. So the, I got it. Then I brought it into the, I brought it into the Rebbe. As soon as I came into the Rebbe, I already had a three, four Yechidah, so the Rebbe knew me very well. The Rebbe was very surprised. Also, I popped over on Moshe or something. So I was uh, packaged. There were, uh, the Rebbe some packaged it. So uh, she, that she did. <laughs> she packaged it very well. 
I don't know how Leibach Rona let me in. Yeah, well, he just passed away, Leibach yeah. So he, uh, he, he, he didn't ask me what I have on. Maybe he didn't see. I don't know. Uh, so you got in. You I got go, in, go to the Rebbe. I put it on the Rebbe's desk, and I said, I have Svarim for Moshe Feinstein for you, for the Rebbe. So he was very, he got so excited. He, uh, he tells me, uh, he opens it up, and he, uh, what do you call again, L- looks very quickly what the inscription, he caught his eye, saw, look like that. Then he wanted to know if he very has it. He very had it. He very had some of Igris and Divers from Moshe. So he uh, also Derech Hanivis. He says, la, la, la. he pointed me that I should go over with him. Let's look at his farm shank. I remember his farm shank. He was also sitting over here. His farm shank was over there. We went over there, and Baruch Hashem, he had a different Igris and Divris. And uh, so then after he finished that. He, uh, he gave me a brach. He told me I should tell him that a uh, Baruch should yaruch uh, yomim and should be able to write chadushim the whole shas. So uh, and then I spoke to the Rebbe like a half an hour, forty minutes it was a long time for the uh, Leiva Gona was getting angry at me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> till this very day, he always remembers that I I meet him here and there, but now I can't meet him anymore. He always reminds me of uh, that time. Yeah, yeah. So, that. Uh, so, but the, the interesting, the, uh, when I ring the bell the next day in Amisha's house, because uh, I, I, I reason why I literally want to, went there, I wanted to give him the message from the Rebbe. Mm-hmm. The Rebbe said, So you, you so ring the so bell. I gave him that, I ring the bell and tell him that. Then Amisha also, on Nevistik, asked me, what did you discuss with the Rebbe? <laughs> so I told him over the whole conversation, back and forth. And it was interesting, maybe it was sight of the Shemaya, my brother was in Yajachidis also. He asked him about something about if you could a, a conserver, if you could take a stella, a from person who got smicha, could go into a, a conservative shul and stay there for year two, just I'm going to ask to turn things around. He's allowed to be there. And uh, the, the Rebbe said yes. So uh, Ramesha said, I agree with him. I have a chuva about that. He says, I also hold like that. So that, that was the first occasion. The last thing, he caught me very off guard. The Levinson calls me up and says that uh, she has to go somewhere. Mordechai Tenna at that time, Mordechai Tenna at that time was grandson, was also helping out a lot. And he couldn't be there at that moment. She says you have to spend uh, the, the, the night with the Rashiva, give him supper, all this. And it's interesting, to, to, she gave me the key to the house. You know, she didn't want it to, uh, I should interrupt his learning. So she gave me the key to the house. So I turned the key, and I know for sure he's a Russian pachtan. In Russia, you're, you're always scared. You Every little thing that you, the KGB could come running at you, everything is always scared. He got a little frightened. He came to the door, who's there, who's there? Because he heard like the door is twisting. I'm hoping that he sees me. So uh, he told me that Mordechai went to a Lubavitcher wedding. That's how we got to speak about that. There was a Lubavitcher a wedding in front of 770. And his grandson, Mordechai Tender, was invited there. So he told me, uh, uh, then he starts getting into a Lubavitcher Rebbe. He says, yeah, I just recently met the Rebbe again. Now, and then, this is the first time he met the Rebbe, Alice, when the Rebbe was a Rebbe. So he told me that... I went to a wedding there in front of 770 from the someone from the Gurus Rabbanim, and uh, the Rebbe's Gaba came over me with Harav Chodokov and said, the Rebbe want to speak to you. She says, of course, I have no problem. So he said, I went into the Rebbe. We spoke of learning, then we spoke of politics. Then he said, again, he told me, we're going to big time with he repeated it again. Then he said, the Rebbe even walked me to back to my car. That was the end of the conversation. I didn't ask him anything, so, you know. We'll be right back to this episode, guys, but you know what time it is. It is AMR Pharmacy (laughs) time. (laughs) It's AMR Pharmacy time. We got AMR flowing through our blood. You know what it is. It's AMR Pharmacy. It's the best pharmacy in the world. 24-7 24-7 availability, free delivery. The I don't know if I, I don't know about that. It, there happens you don't to be know about what? a legendary pharmacy no. in South Africa. But other than South Africa, it's it's definitely the best in America. Definitely the best in America, yeah. by far. And 
there's only like so much we can talk about how great they are. If you guys haven't tried them by now, I just don't know what to say anymore. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to have some fun with this. We were thinking of different taglines that we could use for AMR Pharmacy, the best pharmacy in the world. My personal favorite is we are pharmacists, bump, 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 bump. But Legally. there's a pending lawsuit on, yeah. on us. So I'm going to lay low on that one. So we're turning it to you. We'll do we'll do the next episode from like jail. Yeah, <laughs> like not either that there. or the or the either that or the apartment in Arizona that we're gonna win. Oh, who knows? Hey, I like that. I who like knows? That. But guys, go ahead and email us a tagline, the best tagline for AMR Farm, or the best pitch that you can make for AMR Pharmacy, and we're gonna mention it the the best one on our next episode. Beshame you, obviously, and all your friends and your family will be like, oh my gosh, Chaya or Yanko. Your 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 thingy got mentioned on the podcast. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's gonna mention it. Everyone's going crazy. Yeah, you, and you get Stuchem up the wazoo. And what if they're married already? Again. <laughs> oh my gosh! Send the send the email to meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail dot com. Yes, we and don't. We, we're, we're we're ghetto like that. Yeah, well, we could have gotten a real actual email address, but, but we're like, but who who has time for that? Come on, Gmail is the place you to guys, be. Guys, meaningfulpeoplepodcast at gmail dot com. Send us your best. Uh, tagline for AMR Pharmacy to be featured on this podcast. Or, and yeah, if you're not using AMR Pharmacy, please just try them. 848-222-1110, amrpharmrx.com. It's about time. It was in 1954. Someone approached Rabbi Yashav, uh, came in, and he asked him a, a shayla of pekuch nefesh to make a certain uh, medical procedure. Rabbi Yashev was a little skeptical about dancing, which was very, very difficult. Rabbi Yashev said, Rabbi Kotler is coming in a few days. Rabbi Kotler used to come there every year because he was the Rosh Hashiva of uh, Eitz Chaim. Mm-hmm. So he came every year to uh, Yashev and he stayed usually June, July, and August, the summer months. He spent at Yashev. So Rabbi Yashev said, Rabbi is coming next week. I'm going to approach him and say over to Shaila, I'll discuss it with him, then I'll get back to, well, what's the psak? So Rabaron comes to Etzis Roll, Rabbi Yashav goes over to him, tells him the question, and Rabaron responds to Rabbi Yashav, this is literally Pekuach Nefesh, there's only one person in the whole world who has the authority to uh, don or rule on this Shaila, and that's Ramesha. I don't have the authority to answer you like this, so I'm going to call Ramesha now in the house. So Vyashev said he was listening. Vyashev said they spoke 50 minutes. And that's how Vyashev emphasized it was very expensive those days of call, 1954. <laughs> Ramesha spoke to Rabaran. Rabaran spoke to Ramesha. They both spoke to each other. 50 minutes till they came to a decision. From then on, Rabbi Yasha was a tremendous chaser of Ramosha. Now let me get, I don't want to get sidetracked. Let me get back to what I want, the point I want to bring out. Ramosha is made, all the Machaveo was so amazing that he didn't believe in any uh, formalities. There's no thing that you want to speak to me. I'm an important person that my learning goes first. And, and what do you call again? You have to have appointments after a lot of times. And rather, I'll just say over, I also read recently, of course, Rabbi Rivlin, I mentioned you in the car, Rabbi Rivlin was helping a baron out also before he went to Ramosha, fundraiser for Lakewood, then he came to MTJ to fundraise. So he told Rabbi Rivlin, told Ramosha, this is impossible here in your house. You're learning and the phone is ringing every minute Every three seconds, someone's ringing the door to talk to you. I think we should make hours when the, you, you'll learn three or six hours. Three hours, you'll see people. So Ramayisha responded, what? You want to make hours here? That is Gaiva. You can see me now. I'm learning now. You can't see me. Now I'm not learning. You can see me. That's pure Gaiva. I don't know. By me, I'm available. Whenever you want, everyone is available here. So that, that is an amazing thing. So th- this is what I, 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 my private observation is, it's not a knock chas v'shalom of Yashov or the present day Chaim Kamnievsky. It's just a different situation with Ramosha. Ramosha felt so secure in his knowledge of Torah that Ramosha came to America already in 1938 
already they uh, it was written on him and the apades Ari Olami Bovel. He was already a, not a guy. He was a Ghana Gainam when he came to America. He knew Kawatara Kula in his fingertips. He didn't think that if he's going to spend time with the Tsiba, with people, that would harm his Torah learning. So therefore, he never wanted to set aside time that he, now I got to learn. And now I, uh, I'll be able to speak to people. The only thing he adjusted, he got up every morning, four in the morning. As I see, he has four hours, four to eight to learn. The Minion and Tversh's line was eight o'clock, eight fifteen. So four to eight, he was able to learn uninterrupted. And I'm going to say something. I get off the, off the cuff. And We're off the cuff and off the cuff and off the cuff. Well, lately, I see Ruben Feinstein said it. Because I observed it way, but I, I just read it for Ruby Feinstein, but I've been telling people for, for 30 years about this. I saw him hundreds of hundreds of times in the, while he's learning. I never, ever saw him learning. He only wrote. He wrote either Igris, his Chuvis, or his Chadusha, the Shurim, he had to say in Yeshiva, or he wrote a third set, was he liked to write Chadusha on the Shas. He wrote, he wrote Igris, Shurim and Chadusha Mashas. So you saw him writing. I never ever only saw him learning on Shabbos. I never on the weekdays. I was there sometimes the morning, sometimes the afternoon, sometimes at night. And he so I'm saying the the best time he able was able to write was four to eight. Then he wrote. But the rest of the day, his meat is been Olam Chavero. Someone rang the bell. He ran over to the door. Brought the guy into his room, turned the chair facing the person. I always I observed him. I love to observe him. I stood at the back of the room. I was not a top of a real nosy guy, because I had a lot of the herits. I didn't think it's privacy. So I never listened to conversations. I didn't snoop in the back. <laughs> Very funny. I just for a minute or two want to see well what's going on. So I always observed him that he to always took the chair, he had a chair that, with the wheel, and he always turned the wheel, and he never ever put pressure on the person that I have to get back to my learning. He was, uh, uh, the person could have as much time as he want, felt at home, and he felt that he's talking to a best friend. All kinds of people came, our money's just sign him. One story was uh, very interesting that Shabbos uh, night, uh, the, the Rebetzin w- went to a, a Malava Malka. The Rebetzin went for the yeshiva to a Malava Malka. And uh, I uh, had a st- I, I stood with him, served him, uh, what do you call it, Malava Malka. So the Rebetzin gave me very uh, interesting instructions. And he was listening. She, t- uh, she told me, make sure that... Give him a mouth at nine o'clock, let's say. Uh, let him learn till 10, 10 30. Make sure he's sleeping by 10 30. So, uh, I, first of all, I felt very uh, uncomfortable. I can't do this. Right. You're not uh, like his babysitter. No, I'm, uh, no. And <laughs> I, I know learning is very important to him. And who am I even to give him instructions? I don't care how friendly I am with him. I'm not a, I'm not a, one thing I realized, he, he maybe may believe he's my friend, but I knew I'm not his friend. Mm. I really always felt guilty. I'm getting a little off, but I, personal observation, I felt very guilty and bad when I go back to my house or apartment or whatever it was, and that, how am I speaking to him? I'm speaking like, I'm, he speaks to me like I'm his friend. So, you know, I said, we still go back. I says, gosh. I mean, he's the God La Da, not his friend. Why, why, am, why am I talking? Why be so friendly to me? This is crazy. I have no right to talk to him, you know, for a minute or two, but why does he talk to me like he's my friend? So, the, uh, so I surely didn't want to, uh, inter- do any, uh, in- to interrupt anyway. So what happened, <laughs> it came about 10 to about 11, a quarter 11. He was just about to go to bed. But he went to bed like a half an hour after the Ebbetson, uh, said that he should go. So he told me, this is interesting, I was the Allah. He said, told the Rebbe, I went to sleep like the time she told, even though it wasn't true. 
she don't he she don't want uh, he don't want to hurt the the, the Levinson should feel bad or anything that his health is not uh, is being impaired by the not sleeping on time whatever it is and he's he's he allowed me to tell something not the truth he said tell tell the Levinson that I went to sleep like like she told me <laughs> I think it was like a half an hour difference mm. that was one story just a a general thing he had an unbelievable akarsa uh, atayv that. Usually, completely out of derech of uh, teva for such a godel. One time, it also happened Shabbos night that Ebenson wasn't there, and he he went to the bathroom, he flushed the bathroom, and the water overflowed, and it went into the. Yeah. So he started calling. He called me Ellie. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> he said, "I asked my hear my name." He said, "The water, the water's flowing, flowing." So uh, I'm not the most handiest guy in the world. But uh, I was uh, had enough brains, maybe sighted the Shmaya. I ran in very quickly, crawled to the floor, and I closed very uh, quickly. Boom, boom, boom. In 30 seconds, the whole water was uh, uh, stopped the running. See, he was danking me about 10 minutes. I felt very, very bad. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's the girl I do whatever it is. Uh, what is he so uh, dankful of me? Oh, th- those are the two stories. Uh, no, in, gen- in general... This you could say anyway. The every time I came into the house, the Rebbetzin used to always say, "You have no idea how good the Rashiva is." He said that day this and this happened. He used to go out of his way to do things that really was not befitting such Alman Gadol. She herself was amazed. She used to say, "The Rashiva is as good the man she can't imagine." Let me ask you, what what what's something that uh, made Rev Moshe Feinstein smile? Well, Moshe Feinstein smile. I think when he met young kids, he always tried to go out of his way to uh, be very friendly to you. He loved everybody, but he especially young kids. Mm. If, let's say young kids would say, can I take a picture with you? He'd be the happiest guy in smarter picture. Mm. He, he, loved, uh, he loved young kids, but it wasn't hard to get him to smile. Because he was a, by nature a very friendly person, so there were, it wasn't. Uh, but he be he loved young kids. He he had no problem of uh, speaking to a, a young kid. There's a story I mean, uh, even recent, not there with me, but uh, I just read recently that someone uh, came in, 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 in the Tzvashishlayim, a kid that couldn't f- figure out a pasuk and the sedva, the the his mother said, a eleven twelve year old kid. And he didn't even know where Moshe Feinstein is. He didn't know who Moshe Feinstein is. He sees a person sitting up front, the older man. He says, I can't figure out the Rashi's here. So Moshe was sitting at him and going over the whole set with him, the, the Chumash and the, and the Rashi's. He had no, and you know, it was, made him, uh, Moshe was very, very friendly and warm with him. Did, did you witness his rise in popularity over the years? Yes. Did, did uh, you see more and more people? Yes. Uh, very good question. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> When I first went to Moshe's house, (laughs) he was very, starting to get very popular. I'll give you humbly my opinion, what started making him popular, I think the thirst for Paiskim. The other guy in the world, Baron just was living, or Baron just passed away. The way after Baron, there was Rav Hutama, Rav Hutnab, Yashabeh, of Shach or mm-hmm. Sniper. So, but uh, yeah, but he was a thirst for Paiskim. The uh, Rebetzin Feinstein used to always tell me that the Rosh Hashiva can't understand why everyone is running to get a Zigris and no one's so excited about his Dibris. <laughs> there was a tremendous thirst. As soon as the Igris came out, Ramesha, uh, everyone ran to get it, and Ramesha, and also. I think that Rav Henkin was getting older and couldn't see well. So Rav Henkin, people used to come to Rav Henkin, the, uh, you, you're familiar or not familiar? Rav Henkin is his neighbor on the Lower East Side. Okay. Rav Moshe lived facing the river, East River, and Rav Henkin lived six, seven blocks walking distance. So after he wrote the Igris, that's he, when he, he that's became what very his name, popular. That's when his name, he started giving out one Igris after another, his popularity rose. It's amazing. Let me interject something interesting, Go for which it. Nissen Alpa told me. <laughs> he said, "It's interesting, but a God like Da, we don't take. We have no elections. 
We don't take votes. You pick up your hand. Who's the God Lada or Paisa Gada? Everyone in the world knew that the Rashiva was the God Lada. The Rashiva probably it was. This is my brother. My brother's a very big Talmud Chacham. He, he knows all over Shas and Yeshami. Really, Sal Talmud Chacham. My brother's ideology. We talk a lot about Rav Moshe. Me and my brother. A lot. You of seem Ramesh. very into Rav Moshe Feinstein. What? You seem very into Rav Moshe. He, probably, he defined a big part of your life. Yeah. No? Ah, I'm making a joke. It's no, obvious. No, no. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. Because <laughs> my brother is. Uh, it's interesting. My brother Valf. He uh, was always a uh, who was not a fan. But even after Moshe passed away, my, br- my brother started looking at ignorance. He got, he didn't look while Moshe was living too much in ignorance. He looks much more now and he's much more fascinated. He says, he, he constantly comes over. He says, I just looked at this ignorance. I can't believe this person is writing a tshuva. This belongs to a guy from the uh, who wrote 100 years ago. Doesn't fit for someone living in our day could write such a thing. So my, my brother's ideology, but Moshe was that this is a thing that Minishamayim Minu, there's always a Minu for the God Lado. There's a Minu for Abaran, Ramosha, Ravliyasha, Ravshach, whoever it is. There was a Minu Minishamayim. So, notwithstanding, Ramosha was very far from a charismatic personality. A charismatic personality was Labav Geneva, full of charm and charisma. It's insane. Yechidis with the Rebbe was like such an unbelievable event. His smile and his joke and his talk, very charming person and charismatic. But Moshe was not a charming person. The only reason that he probably was chosen, Malamila, and actually the Gedder Rebbe said the Basis Roll was a giant. Basis Roll said that in every door, they pick one Paisa door. In this door, they pick Ramesha as the Paisa door. Picked. So Ramesha didn't have to, as Nisan Halpert said, he didn't have to electioneer. Ramesha was void of any publicity. There was no uh, promotion. There was no one around the promoting. He had no publicity. Uh, Ramesha once said, uh, I grabbed a part of his anivis. They asked him, you asked me the question. Let me give you the answer what she gave. Ramesha gave you, how are you, how do you get it? How are you so popular? A uh, sound for the New York Times uh, was an interview. Interview for the New York Times. So the, the religious writer said, how, how do you became so popular? He says, I don't know. I, I'll t- I think it's like this. I write, uh, someone asked me a shy malacha. I give him an answer. I write a tshuva to him. He's satisfied. He tells his friend. His friend tells his friend. So people see that I, uh, I'm answering properly. Mm-hmm. That was his understanding. Do you, do, uh, you, do you see a big difference in a world without Rav Moshe Feinstein? Day and night. Yeah? Well, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about that day and night? Yeah. I started the car. Just to clarify with people, I, I gave Ali a ride over here. So that's <laughs> whenever he references the car, we, we spoke a little. Yeah. And anytime we were coming to a juicy topic, I said, let's save it for the podcast. So day and night. Yeah, yeah. In 1986, I, my brother, we discussed my brother many times, and he thinks the same as me. At the Kufa of G'dayli, a guy in Yisrael, finished. That winter, Rabbi Yain Kamnetsky passed away first, then Ramosha, then Rav Uderman. After Ramosha passed away, in America... There used to be, everyone used to say Rabbah Rab- Ramosha. People don't know that. Any issue, I was at 11, 12 when I heard that. And the bill, her, Rabbah Ramosha holds, Ramosha holds. Every issue in the America, the world even, was Rabbah Ramosha hold. Then when Ramosha pissed, so really, truthfully, the world held Rabaran as the god Lada. Rabaran. Kotla. Kotla. Rabaran was held as the god Lada, and Ramosha was the like a Kohen Godl. This is my own philosophy, ideology. Rabaran was the god Lada, and Ramosha was the Sagan, god Lada. Like you have a Kohen Godl and Sagan Kohen Godl. And at that period, Ramosha was always the Paisak Where Baron was living, everyone would 
Ash Rabah Ramosha. So anything uh, issue? Because we'll soon get to your question. Would you? I'm gonna answer your question. Don't think I'm not answering it. Oh, I'm not that period, <laughs> that everyone, you, uh, any issue in Kalayus role, the many political issues. We're not gonna talk tonight about it. Right. About the at his role, Gaius Bonim, and the taking girls into the army, and the uh, Rabbanis Arashit. They wanted to make the the chief rabbi. They wanted to make a. Uh, a Sanhedrin, there was many uh, million issues in America mm-hmm. had issues. So everything usually was resolved around Ramosha. Obama was there first. And every signator was always about Ramosha. They always signed. There's even an interesting story for a shiner, for a shiner's book, Safer, whatever you want to call it, that I saw a few months ago. They once the, the person approached Ramosha and told him, I need a signature for you or a baron. Here's the two spaces to sign. We need, you know, sign. You, I got you first. You sign first. Look around Moshe's Anivis. Look around Moshe's Anivis. The person said, I need your signature, a bound signature for some co coira And your first sign. You sign here, a bound sign over here. So Moshe says, no. A baron is a baron. I'm not signing. I'm signing the second. Leave blank the first. A baron must sign first. Look at that uh, unbelievable, uh, the, the Herods. But Rabaran always called Ramosha the, the Paisa Gado and the Stipler and the Gedanebba. Beis Yisrael, the Stipler, and Rabaran called Ramosha the Paisa Gado. What happened when Rabaran passed away it was unbelievable. I wasn't Rabbeinu Yaakov Yosef Yeshiva, RJJ. RJJ and MTJ is right next to each other. RJJ, around the corner from RJJ is MTJ. Mm-hmm. I was uh, 12, 11, 12 years old at that time. So, uh, you know, I didn't ha- have no shaykhs to, I knew Ramayish already, but my Rebbe, who was later my Rebbe, Ramando Kravitz, was a Talmud Muvik for Rabbi, his best Talmud. And all the Talmudim and all the Rebbe in RJJ were Rabbi's Talmudim. So I saw the atmosphere in RJJ. They almost never, twice in RJJ history in my days, they said no more learning. Everyone got into the base medal, say, tell them. Six day war, Monday morning, and Thursday, Rabban was suddenly taken to the hospital. Ramesha was saying, tell them, and the whole yeshiva. And the person came in and said, it's, it's, uh, it's all over now, but Rabban's gone. So Ramesha had two reactions. He said, it's a cutter sign, it's a cutter sign. It can't be, it can't be. Can't be, it can't be. Then he has 30 seconds left. A second, he says, Saratsan Abaira, Saratsan Abaira. But th- then there was a little politics uh, went on. Uh, they asked uh, Ramosha when to make or balance Levaya. That was the decision that it was monumental consequences. Rabaran passed away like 12, 1 o'clock Thursday. It was a short Friday. You could still make the Levaya Friday. So Lakewood, Yeshiva, Shneya, maybe the Yeshiva, the, the all air. So Moshe went to Levaya for a bar and B, Friday or Sunday. Moshe said, in general, we don't put, we don't uh, push off a Levaya, <clears throat> but in this case, for the cover for a baron, we must push it off on Sunday, the islands that we want to, the most island to come. And uh, that, that's what happened. And then by Levaya, Ramosha, got it a little involved into a little the squirmish what happened like when people don't notice. Uh, Rav Shneya was, was said to be Rosh Shiva, but he was challenged by his brother-in-law, Rav Schwartzman. Do you ever know Barry Schwartzman? You ever heard of him both? Now we have. Yeah. He comes from a Chabad family. <laughs> uh, no. You know a barrel of Babish, I'm not going to go over uh, <laughs> Get off in here. Uh, Rav Schwartzman comes from a Chabad family, but he was a Baron Zaydam. He was not a genius. He was a super genius. Goyen Nifla, insane Goyen. The Rauren son-in-law? Yeah. Rav Schwarzman was an insane genius. And his children, Rav Oshin, is the son-in-law of him. Hmm. And Rav Oshin, So what, hap- what happened at the what happened at the Levaya? Levaya, there was, he wanted to become Rosh Shiva, Rav, Rav, Rav uh, Schwarzman. So Rav Moshe interjected Mul Levaya to Hespit. That he uh, uh, bar left over son of Gold Batura, and he surely beat a Rosh Hashiva, Rav Shneya. 
So once Ramayisha says that, no more argument. Ramayisha Paschal by the Levaya that uh, Rav Shnei is a bit of a Shiva. But here's, you're talking about Ramayisha personally, here's something no one knows. So this is... This is, this is why we got you. Out of the press. No, this but you could now verify it because the one who told me lives in Far Rockaway. <laughs> he was walking, <laughs> yeah. leaving Kvashi Shalayim to go to Levaya. Levaya, my memory was one o'clock. He was walking out of Tversh Shalayim. To get to Levaya from Tversh Shalayim is about a two-minute walk. A minute walk. MTJ, walk the end of the block. There's a place called Cavaria, a shul. It's like a host, 20, 30,000 people. Of course, it's three, four blocks of people. So they made Levaya there. Rav Krinsky was walking with Ramaisha. And he said, Ramaisha made two remarks to him. He said, first day, uh, Rav Krinsky, as they were getting close to the uh, street, Rav Krinsky told Ramaisha, oh, look at this huge crowd, the cover for our baron. Wow. So Ramaisha says, we're not interested in the cover for our baron. We need our baron. Who cares? We're, 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 we're we need him here. The then, um, this is very important. This, this is the most important thing. He, Ramaisha told Krinsky, Rav Krinsky, Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Everything's going to fall on me now. He means our baron's gone. Whoever was, uh, you know, uh, Clyde's role was, oh, we think our baron, our baron, everything is going to fall on did, me now. Did, did his call volume go way up after our baron passed away? Oh, it went up exponentially. Right away? Right. Oh, beautiful During question. Shiva? Uh, right. Right away. Let me show you what, what happened. Our baron, our Moshe, well, like Kol Gadolim, the God Lado was a baron, and Moshe was under him, and Moshe was a Now, there was a question, how do you divide the future of Klai Yisrael in America? Mm -hmm. uh, do you divide, like before, Rab Moshe is the top, and under him is Rab Yankov. So do you have like co-captains, or do you have a captain? Co-captains, co right. Would Rab Moshe be the main force, and under him, together with him, would be Rabbi Yaakov Kamnetsky or Vodaman. Who makes these decisions? I'll show you how. Who makes decisions is a good role, like today. Okay. You see, the, the most forceful thing that made Ramayisha Baron popular were two organizations, a good role and Chinuch Hatzmoy, and a good A good Chinuch Hatzmoy also, a good Sabanim, a good role. They make decisions. So uh, uh, Baron was living, uh, Baron was the Nasi of Metz's Gudel Latira, and Ramayisha was the Sagan Metz's, the Nasi of Metz's Latira. So now the decision was, what should we do now? Do we give everything to Ramayisha, uh, uh, or we give Rabbi Yankov things? So I give, Rabbi Tzav Feinstein told me this. This as heard from Rabbi Tzav Feinstein. Ramayisha uh, wouldn't tell me this, <laughs> and I can talk personally about it. Rabbi Tzav Feinstein told me, that Rabbi Yankov was approached and said that we'll give Ramayisha Gurus Yisrael this and this and this. We want to give you this and this and this. So Rabbi Yankov says, no, 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 no. Ramayisha is the God Lada and, and he gets everything. I don't want anything. But then the Rebbe told me Ramayisha saw it was getting too much. He says they got to give Rabbi Yankov something. And he says, I don't want to be in Thomas over the head. Let Rabbi Yankov uh, run or other people of Hutna, let them run Thomas over at Khan. So that was, uh, and Rabbi Yankov had an observation, uh, what I'm going to say, what I observe. I'm going to show you what I observe when uh, Rabbi Yankov observed the same thing. I'm going to go back to his learning. Rashmu Kamenetsky uh, once said, How come by all Asifas, Agurus Yisrael, you refer to names. Rav Udama, what's up there, Rav Udama? Rav Shnei, what do you say? Rav Hutna, what do you say? He never said Rav Moshe. You say, what's the Rav Shiva hold? So Rav Shmuel Kamnetsky was about this meeting, and he went back in the car with his, with his, fa with his, with his father after the meeting. He says, Ta, there, how come every Rav Shiva, you're saying his name, Rav, 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 Rav Yankov was the senior citizen. He's like, nah, he was six, seven years older than Rav, Rav Moshe. So he was like the one going around. So he was saying, Rav Vudman, what do you hold? Rav Hutna, what do you hold? Rav Shnei, what do you hold? And when came to Rav Moshe, he said, the Rav Shiva, more Daruch covered. So he says, what do you want? 
You ever have observed the way he learns? You also say, you wouldn't call my name. He said when he learns, he's completely bent in. Maisha used to bend in and write like that. He was completely bent in. He never learned. Derech covet and bitl to Torah. Maisha never sat back. I saw him learning for years and years of writing, mostly writing. He never stood erect. He was always bent completely in. So Rabbi Yankov was completely bottled to Maisha. Rabbi Yankov and Grada, Rabbi Yankov, I heard from him. In the last dinner for Tver Shushalayim, held in the Manhattan, the Vista, Vista by, uh, what do you call it, near City Hall. There's a hotel there. The last dinner. So we were lucky to have Rabbi Yankov to be the guest of honor that night. So Rabbi Yankov said that Ramosha is not only the God Lada and this da, he, he would have been from the Gedele Ada hundreds of years ago. Ramosha would have been from the Gedele Ada if he lived hundreds of years ago. He would still be the God Lada now. Hundreds of years ago, he'd be from the Mon- and And then I did this, I recently read. Rabbi Yankov said, <laughs> he, he told someone, you're going to tell your grandchildren you were Zeichah to see Ramosha Feinstein. You're going to tell your grandchildren you had this chus to see Ramosha. Did Ramosha ever go to Eretz Uh Once. What? Once. Uh, let me tell you a little background. He went together with my Rebbe, Ramando Kravitz, and uh, it was Kinesi Gedela, 1965. You were asking me when his name took off. <laughs> At that moment, everyone was waiting in anticipation because till then, Ramayish let Rabaran go to see Gedola and he never went. It was like 1959, 61, whatever it was. And this is the first Kinesi Gedola after Rabaran passed away. There was a tremendous anticipation at the Sval. Everyone wanted to see Ramayish and at the Sval. And at the Sval, all the Gedola, he stood in Central Hotel. Now it's called Prima. After, let's keep up to date. Prima. It's a good, ad. Just, it's a good ad for them. Yeah, right. Getting there. a shout out. Right. Know, much right. Just, yeah. Still in the room. And all day, Gadela, Rav Liasha, Rav Shach, all day the Gadela were coming in and out of the place. Jabina Rav. Did you? Were you there with him? Uh, no. Mm-hmm. I was there with Jabina Rav. Interesting. I'll give you a, uh, a highlight. Tangent, yeah. How did the Cheretz, what took me. And I'll show you, now you want to know stories about, you're asking me stories, so I'll remind myself of another about me, this, since you mentioned uh, 1960. There's a few more, because we, we're yeah. already a little over right, time. All right, all right. Another of them a minute or so, then we'll go to the next hour later. <laughs> so in the 1964, uh, Jabina Rav was the God Lord Don as well. You both heard of Jabina Rav? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jabina. So Jabina Rav also came to, to the Prime Hotel Central, to uh, what do you call again to speak to Ramaisha. And that winter, 65, the Chabina Rav passed away. So I, I happened to be in Ramaisha's house. I didn't coordinate it to go to Jabina Rav's. Uh, I didn't even know about there was a uh, Shleshim or something, but I happened to be in Ramaisha's house. Ramaisha remarked that I have to leave. I'm going to uh, to the Jabina Rav's uh, Hesper, the Shleshim. Mm-hmm. So he said, he asked me, he, was, uh, he said, you want to come, you want to come with me? I said, of course. So this, I'll show you his tremendous bambidus. And I also, I saw the awe. I, I was also taken back to all the Eilam had. Let me just give you a background material. Whenever Amosha spoke in public, if he came a little late, the Eilam jumped up, you thought like a bomb took off. It could be a thousand, two thousand people would jump up like. Also, when they introduced him to speak, everyone used to jump out very quickly. So what happened? He was late at this night. So the driver left us off three, four blocks uh, uh, to find parking space. It was his father's shul. The shul had about three, four thousand people. Every uh, the whole downstairs was full. The whole ladies section was full. The hallways are full. There was easy three, four thousand people. At that time, all the good in America were there, above whatever was there, all the good in America were there. And Maisha was late. So Maisha came in. I was right in back of him because I just walked in from the car. And the oil got in, got up. There's such a noise they made, and the speaker couldn't continue speaking. The speaker so then the, 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 the interrupted for two, three minutes. Then the speaker 
used to also ask, they never asked if any other Rabbah the speaker used to always ask the Rishos to speak. So I remember the speaker, I forgot who it was even now, he, everything stopped, Torah Moshe was able to sit, Moshe sat in the first seat, when there was the rabbi, the rabbi gave him his seat to sit, the rabbi moved to the next seat, and there was Rabbi David Singer, and the speaker said, but the Rishus the Rashiva means he couldn't speak further before he gets Rishus. He says, Rishus the Rashiva, then he continues speaking. Here's what I want to say, Amosha's Midas. So when I came back into the street to go back with him, Ramosha noticed our neighbor was a Chashavarov, where we, we dab him Friday night, that minion. It was called the Dembekarov. So Ramosha asked, Does he have a car ride yet? So he says, go, go ask if he has a car ride. So I, I, I went over, I then back off. I said, Ramesha wants to know if you have a ride back home. He says, no, no, I don't have no ride yet. So he says, I said, come with us. <laughs> so it showed you the, the, uh, the, the meters he had. Once I was by a wedding with him, and he uh, is such an honor, he had no car ride back. She so saw me. She said that uh, I, I'll go back with you after the after the uh, chuppah. Yeah? I'll go back with you by, by train. <laughs> I'll go back by train with you to uh, what do you call again to the east side. I was getting a little frightened because I don't, if I go by train back with him, it will be a horror day for me. I would impossible me to hold out. Because that means I gotta walk with him the street, find the train, sit the train. It's I, I don't want to be two hours with him. It would be very demeaning for me to be talking. I'm, I'm his friend. What am I? I'm gonna go go into the train, walk in the train, sit in the train with him. It was the worst thing I could possibly happen. So I said I'm gonna go find the ride. It took me here thirty seconds. The first guy here. So <laughs> my shit needs a ride. <laughs> There's no question. He, that guy was scheduled to stay for the whole wedding, but he had no problem. He says, of course I'll, I'll drive him back. So wow. uh, we, we're, we're driving back. So the, what do you call again? He took a few other people back, ladies, whatever it was. Ramesha said that I don't want to take away the seat from uh, whatever it is. I'll sit with you in the back. So the, the, the commander Ramesha said, let the lady sit out front. I'll sit in the back with you. So uh, the man, the driver, was <laughs> never. Rashiva, come the Rashiva, you, you sit here. So I, 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 the driver, I was in the middle, and he was at the end. His, his meters is, he didn't want to, I should be uh, squashed. He was squashing so much towards the window to make it comfortable for me. I felt horrible. I kept on going like this. I want to go. I don't care if I'm squashed. Uh, but uh, I kept on going like this, and he was going like this, like this. And it, you see his meters, he went out of his way to talk to the driver a few minutes. Say, hello, where will you come from? Blah, blah, blah. Three minutes, four minutes, conversation ended. He went right back to Chazi Mishnayas. He would never, ever waste a minute. He could be friendly with you. He could sit here, talk to you. If the session is over now, 201, he stopped talking to you. And his car ride got to be 220 to pick him up. He's finished 201 with you. We learned for the next 15 minutes. Wow. He would never, he never, David Feinstein was accurate. He never wasted a second of his life. If this any, a few times I walked with him in the street a few, maybe 10, 15 times. He would say a few words to me. Were, how's this? How's that? How's this? I wouldn't say anything further. He would go to Chazim Mishnai's Balpeh. I just want to, I just want to finish off with this point. Um, when I was driving you here, I mentioned, I said, you know, if Rav Moshe Feinstein was still alive today, he probably would never come on our podcast to talk with us. And you were very confident about something. Could you, could you share uh, yes. what you said? Rav Moshe felt that even though he's the, he knew he was the God of in Torah, he felt that anything that is to Ellis, none of the... See, but if any individual, if a young kid comes and rings the bell in his house, eight-year-old kid, Ramayusha could be writing the most hardest truth in the world of the Kuch Nefesh in his room writing, and the doorbell rang, and the eight-year-old kid came in, he couldn't figure out a Pasuk Rashi, Ramayusha would put aside 
his uh, writing and uh, learning and give the kid undivided attention and not make him feel uh, that uh, you're taking up my time. As, far, as soon as the kid wants to leave, then he would, that, that was his nature. He would surely... Uh, so he, he, would be, he would come on the show? He would come on the show <laughs> without a question. If, that, if he knows nice. he's not promoting him, he's not trying to promote himself. <laughs> right. If he but knows if he can help you, people. Yeah, you want even if he knows you want to help yourself. You're the next best thing. No, if he knows <laughs> that you're only helping you two people. Well, you we're know, only doing this show for Nachi. It's not even for anyone else. <laughs> right. This is why we're doing but, it. So I'm saying <laughs> even for what you do, huh? it's only to tell us that it's going to help your panasa or your fame, whatever it's going to help you. Not to tell us for young kids listening. From I should knew that my appearing... And this show is going to help you personally, a personal gain to go on without a question. Wow. A question answered. That's really beautiful. Is there, is there one, we, we have another minute. Is there one last, you made a lot of points about him. Is there anything else? <laughs> is there maybe a story, a certain moment, maybe something you would tell Rev Moshe today if you saw him? I know you mentioned the car. Rev Moshe was sitting right over here, right across from you right now. What would you tell him? I would tell him that, uh, let me see, I would tell him that, I don't know if I would, I would say maybe myself, I don't know if I had the, the, really the wishes to talk to you like a friend. Why do you, you know, why, uh, it's, uh, it's really, it's, you try to be out of your way friendly, but with CD, I think it's a little, but uh, that is basically, I, I would say I felt a little uncomfortable talking to him too much. I felt guilty after I left. While I'm talking to him, it was very friendly. When I went back to my house, I felt a little guilty. I'll leave you one another story how I felt guilty. The last story. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do so it. So what was the story? So the story is like this. He comes over to me. He says, I'm startled to what uh, Shina said yesterday. I, I can't believe it. Even to, even to me, it takes me a little back. What's the story, Ali? So is following. <laughs> yeah. One night, I'm in this house pretty late. At 1030, I was there till let's say 11 even. And... Amisha goes into sleep, and I'm, I'm ready to leave. You know, 11, two minutes, 11, 5, 11, 10, I'm ready. Still in the kitchen. I was, must have been learning, so I didn't leave that second. I must have been looking at a Gemara, and I'm ready to leave five minutes to go back. Suddenly, I look up, Amisha's in pajamas, and he put his robe, he don't want a, a robe over his pajamas, and he comes in, and he said in Yiddish, Ich vergessen sogar gute Nacht for you. I forgot to say good night to you. Wow. Wow. It means he, every night, whenever he be, uh, he part of me, he always said, Gutenach, Gutenach. He already went into bed. He came out of bed. His eyes were blink. I remember like, <laughs> I remember like yesterday. <laughs> he was standing by the kitchen. I'm by the, uh, that chair over there. The kitchen is blinking. He says, If I guess it's all, Gutenach. And uh, so I tell you the truth, when I went back to my house, I was very hurt. I says, You know, this is crazy. What does he got to do that? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not mocked, but I'm not even though it doesn't enter my mind. The sla- you think it enters my mind if he said good night to me? It doesn't enter. If he says good night to me every night, it uh, doesn't enter me. She said good night. And I'm mocked, but that uh, he even imagine. Ali, maybe you, maybe you guys were friends. <laughs> oh, best why, friend. Why, why couldn't Rabbi Moshe Feinstein have Rabbi a friend? Feinstein told me. I told you, I, I never even told my brother anyone else. Maybe I told my brother once recently, about three years ago. There's only one comment that maybe we're friends. The Rebbitson told me the Rashiva Hatach like the Rashiva Hatach leave Vaegana. Rashiva likes like one of his own. <laughs> so I think I think so. You, going to Bezal Shamayla and say I'm I think that Rashiva I think you were friends. I think you were friends. No, we're friends because he acted like that. I can't consider myself a friend, but that's his nature. I'm not friends. Believe God, for, how can we have no friends? Wow. All right, that ends that because I don't we can't go further. Yeah, that you was stop and you go to something uh, assume it's something different. Hope you enjoyed that episode, guys. You might find yourself now like Googling Rav Moshe Feinstein, trying to see more pictures, videos, different different things about him. I think I sure did after having that conversation. And and a big shout out to our guest Ali, who was just incredible. It was there was so so much uh, depth and, and deep content that he had, uh, the experiences that he had. Yeah. Um, he, you saw his sort of his face was was glowing and shining as as he spoke. So, yeah. Uh, as you're saying, in in like some of the stories, it, you I felt I saw in his face as if he was like back and he was there. Um, and it, he even there's 
even a bunch of things that he even mentioned on the car ride home that I like he didn't know if he could share what he should share <laughs> okay. like th- dreams uh, different dreams he had about Rav Moshe coming to I, I don't know like really I, uh, Ali's a very special guy and like yeah. he 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 definitely imbued a bunch of Rav Moshe's qualities of like being a, like he's like Ali treats himself like a regular guy but people don't even know that like Ali learns like most of the day these days right just and, learning and learning and right and I thought something very cool is, is Ali said that if Rav Moshe was around today, that he would come on our podcast. I know. Right? I've t- by, by the way, I've told people that, like, I don't know if I should come on. I'd be like, by the way, you R- should just know. Just saying, Rav Moshe Feinstein, right. he, he would come on. Right. So, the Ezra Hashem, Tchias and Mason, will be able to have a pretty epic podcast of Rav Moshe Feinstein. I think it'll be the best one, yeah. Who yeah. knows? But until then, we hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. We have a ton. Hold on. I just want to give a shout out. Thank you. Oh, shout to out. My- brother oh shout out to up with, uh, Aaron, Aaron Brody Dr. Aaron Brody uh, best dentist in the game guys yeah. check him out in T-neck yeah alright yeah, he's great I knew that yeah, nice. um, but guys we got a lot of great guests coming up so really good continue guests. to share our episodes subscribe both on YouTube and, and your podcast or Spotify wherever it may be and we love seeing your reviews yeah and, and keep in mind everyone I think next week next episode we're going to announce the five winners of the Meaningful Minute book. So if you didn't yet leave a review on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. And for those who said, they're so nice, they sent me an email, sent us an email saying, oh, I, I don't listen on Apple, I don't have an iPhone. We appreciate that. So thank you yeah. very much. That's really kind. Um, so yeah, please share these episodes. Get ready for goodness coming up. Goodness. And remember to read about Pascal Yes. And remember, this episode was a doozy. Yaakov Linder. Oh gosh. Ciao.